Okay, today we're going to learn about tests for parallelograms, and these are our content standards and the mathematical practices we'll use in our assignment. Previously, you've recognized and applied properties of parallelograms, and now we're going to recognize the conditions that ensure a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and we're going to prove that a set of points forms a parallelogram in the coordinate plane. If a quadrilateral has each pair of opposite sides parallel, it is a parallelogram by definition. This is not the only test, however, that can be used to determine if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Here are some more conditions for parallelograms. <clears throat> if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, if both a pairs of opposite angles are congruent, if the diagonals bisect each other, and if one pair of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent. And here's a proof of theorem 6-9, so I'll pause for a moment and let you study that. So let's determine whether this quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and we need to justify our answer. So what you notice is that each pair of opposite sides of this parallelogram has the same measure. Therefore, they're congruent, because if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congru congruent, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So uh, from those theorems, those conditions for parallelograms that we saw earlier in the uh, slides, let's see which method would prove that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, notice one pair of opposite sides is both uh, congruent and it is parallel. So that's what proves that this is a parallelogram. You can use conditions of parallelograms to prove relationship, relationships in real world situations. So here's a pair of a scissor lifts and in the diagram A is congruent to C and B is congruent to D. And we're asked to explain why the consecutive angles will always be supplementary regardless of the height of the platform. Since both pairs of opposite angles of quadrilateral ABCD are congruent, ABCD is a parallelogram by theorem 610. Theorem 65 states that consecutive angles of parallelograms are supplementary. Therefore, the measure of angle A plus the measurement of angle B is equal to 180 and also measurement of angle C plus the measurement of angle D is 180. So by substitution, the measurement of angle A plus the measurement of angle D is 180, and the measurement of angle C plus the measurement of an angle B is 180. So time for you to check your progress. So pause for a moment, look over the answers, and select the most appropriate one. This is just like the scissor lift. So uh, angle A is always going to be congruent to angle C because A and B will always be supplementary. Now you can also use the conditions of parallelograms along with algebra to find missing values that make a quadrilateral a parallelogram. So now we're to find X and Y so that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, we know that opposite sides are congruent, so we're simply going to set them equal to each other. By substitution, we're going to use the distributive property, multi uh, multiply this 3 across the parentheses, subtract 3x from both sides, add 1 to each side, so x is 7. Okay, so now AD is equal to BC, so we can solve for y. Use the distributive property. Subtract 3y from both sides, add 2 to both sides, so y is equal to 5. So when x is 7 and y is 5, this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, time for you to check out your skills. So pause the, vote, the video and then come back and check your answer. Did you set your problem up 4m plus 2 is equal to 3m plus 8? So then m is equal to 6. Very good. You've learned the conditions of parallelograms, 
And the concept summary shows how to use the conditions to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We can use the distance, slope, and midpoint formulas to determine whether a quadrilateral in the coordinate plane is a parallelogram. So here we're asked to uh, check the slope. What we're going to do is we're going to check the slope of the opposite sides. In order to do that, let's, we're going to sketch a figure. Whenever I'm given points like this, I always sketch a figure so I can see which two sides I need to see are parallel, which ones are opposite. So if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then it is a parallelogram. So we'll know it's parallel if they have the same slope. So QR has the same, same slope as ST, and RS has the same slope as TQ. So because uh, they have the same slope, we know they're parallel. So we have two sets of parallel lines, and we have a parallelogram by definition. Okay, time for you to check your progress. Determine whether this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Remember what you need to do. First, sketch your points, plot all these on a coordinate plane, and then see which two sides you need to find out are parallel to each other. And then determine the slope of those two lines. Well, I started out looking at EF and GH, and EF has a slope of negative one-half, and GH has a slope of three-fourths, so no, this one's not a parallelogram. In Chapter 4, you learned that variable coordinates can be assigned to the vertices of triangles. Then the distance, slope, and midpoint formulas were used to write coordinate proofs of theorems. The same can be done with quadrilaterals. So remember when we went over coordinate proofs very briefly. You're going to begin by placing the vertex A at the origin. We want to use the origin. We're going to let AB have a length of A units and so that B has the coordinates of AO, A0. And the distance from D to C is also A units, so let X coordinate of D be B and of C be B plus 8. Thank goodness we've got a drawing. So we've got A, we're going to place at origin. B goes 8 units along the x-axis. D, we're plotting at BC. And C is B plus A. It goes A length, so B plus A. And its Y coordinate is C. So we're going to use the figure to write a proof. So we're given that it's a quadrilateral and that AB is congruent to DC and AD is congruent to BC. So by definition, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if opposite sides are parallel. So we're going to use the slope formula. The slope of AB is 0. We've got horizontal line there, as well as CD is 0 and the slope of BC is C over B. So A, B, and C, D have the same slope, and A, D, and B, C have the same slope. So we've got two sets of parallel lines. So we have a, this quadrilateral is a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. So which of the following can be used to prove the statement below? I'm going to let you pause, study the figure and the answers, and you choose the best one and come back and check your answer. I chose A because notice AB is A units long. It goes from 0 to A. Also, DC is A units long. It goes from B to B plus A. So we have and we've got the same slope. Both have a slope of 0. So this is what we need to prove that it's a parallelogram. Excellent, you're ready to begin the assignment.